hammer, hammer, act natural. I'm casually at work in my shop. Oh, hey there. Say, have you ever watched that show with those people from Waco? And thought, hey, I need a farmhouse table. And then you find a farmhouse table on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and you go to buy it and it's all crooked and full of screw holes and it's just terrible. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a farmhouse table that's not terrible. So, watch it. Hammer, hammer. Alright, for a table that is not terrible, first you're going to need lumber that's not terrible. That means not going to the big orange and blue store down the street from you. Uh, for this project, I used ash, and the table turned out pretty not terrible. Uh, ash is pretty economical. I bought it rough and milled it all up myself with a jointer and a planer. Now, if you don't have a jointer like this, and if you don't have a planer like this, you can go to the lumber yard and purchase wood S4S. And what that means is that it's surfaced on all four sides. So basically you just pay them extra to do this for you. Then you can lay it all out and look at it and imagine how beautiful it's gonna be. After you do that, we're gonna glue it all together. You don't need uh, dowels or biscuits or anything else. The glue forms a joint that's actually stronger than the wood itself. There were five boards on this tabletop, so I decided to glue them up into a section of three and a section of two. And then after those dried the next day, we glued those two pieces together. It really helps with alignment. After you get it all glued up and take it out of clamps, we're gonna cut it down to size. This is a Craig, I think it's called the AccuTrack thing or something. It's like a track saw for somebody who's poor like me. And it's, it's not terrible, but like I say that with hesitation. And then we're gonna router off all the edges. This is a quarter inch round over. After that, we're gonna set the top aside and we're gonna start working on the base. Uh, for the base, you can see what an advantage it is to have big, thick lumber to begin with because we don't have to make the legs. Uh, we can just cut them out of single pieces. So we're gonna cut them all to length in the table saw, then lay it out, see kind of sort of what it's gonna look like. On the top and bottom of the base, we are going to cut some dados so that the upright portions of the base can fit in there and that will help with racking side to side later on. So you're just gonna cut it all out on your table saw like this. You can use a dado blade if you want to. I didn't wanna mess with putting it in there. And then you see how they fit inside like that. And that's real nice. On the base, we are also going to pick the base up off the floor so we're going to cut four blocks to go on each end, and then we are going to attach them to the base uh, with some glue and screws, but we're going to countersink those screws. Remember, we don't want to see a bunch of big, ugly, stupid screw holes. So we're going to countersink those screws, and that's what our base looks like. We're going to put some screws from the bottom up into the upright supports of this. So we are going to pre-drill and then countersink from the bottom again so that the big screw heads won't be sticking out. You'll never ever see them. For the angled support pieces, all I did was hold it up about where I thought it would look right and then I just scribed the line on the back and cut those two angles and turned out that it was pretty good. So we're going to cut the steep angle and the shallow angle on the table saw. And then I went ahead and cut off the very tip of the top uh, because that was kind of brittle. It was such a steep angle. And then we're gonna check our fit. Everything looks not terrible so far. On that angled piece, all we're gonna do is screw it into the base. So we're gonna get a Forstner bit and countersink. 
Then inside that hole, we're gonna countersink again because the big hole is just there for our plug later on. We need to countersink our screw head. We'll set all that aside and we're gonna work on the stretcher now. We're gonna mark the center of the stretcher and the center of the support and line those up. And then we can mark out exactly how wide the stretcher is. And then we're gonna draw a little squiggly line through what we wanna cut away over at the table saw. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Uh, we're just gonna cut deeper dados with the table saw blade. Now, set it onto the stretcher. Mark across the top exactly how wide your support piece is going to be. Mark what you're going to be cutting away. Transfer that line all the way down the side. Now, after we transfer the line down the side, we've got to figure out how deep we want to cut it, though. So how do we figure that out? Well, we put that support piece back on there and mark that line. Remember, whatever is left on the support piece is what we want to take away on the stretcher. We'll use the miter saw to cut all of this waste away. Set that depth stop so that the blade doesn't go all the way down. And then forget to turn your camera on so nobody can see what you did. You can see how they're going to fit together. Now that all of our base pieces are cut before we assemble anything, we are going to sand it all. Because remember, our goal is not terrible. Now we're gonna put the base together. We have all of our pieces. Everything is countersunk. Put it in some clamps and check square just to see, make sure that everything is good. It is, so we take some big old honking screws and screw it all together. But we do it to where nobody will ever see. So these screws go into the stretcher. I just use some three inch screws here, but those screw holes are gonna be covered up with our angle pieces. Before we put anything else together, we're going to pre-stain as much of this as we can. I'm using Rubio Monocoat in chocolate for this, and it turned out pretty good. With Rubio Monocoat, you only have to apply the finish one time. So you put it on, and then you buff it in, wait a few minutes, and then remove all of the excess. We're going to do that for our angled pieces, and we're going to do that to the base. We're going to get into all of the little pieces and places, that spot right there. It turned out all right. When all the finishes dry, we're going to be able to put our angled pieces in. Now remember, we countersunk for the screws inside of those holes right there so that we can do this. I'm going to put some glue around a three-quarter inch dowel, and then we're going to tap it into place, and we're going to fill up all of the screw holes like that. After the glue dries, we'll come back with a flush trim saw and cut off the dowels. You can see that we scratched up our finish. That's okay because we're going to come back with a sander, and we're going to sand those dowels down flush anyway, and then we're just going to refinish the face of that angled piece. So all of our pieces are finished, they're all done. We're gonna flip this table upside down. We're gonna put it all together. We wanna make sure that it is centered at both ends and that those bases are flush. The Forstner bit has a brad point in the middle of it. So we wanna tap that into the tabletop then we'll know exactly where to drill our holes. So we're gonna drill down with this Forstner bit and we're going to add some threaded inserts into the tabletop here. The threaded insert threads into the tabletop and then it receives a bolt. So we can bolt the tabletop on. An important thing to watch here, see how loose the bolt is in that hole? The hole that we drilled for the bolt has to be bigger than the bolt itself. What that'll do is allow for expansion and contraction of the top itself. We'll do the same thing for the stretcher with my lovely assistant to hold the other end. Right there, that's where I kiss her, right there. When you're all done, you have a farmhouse dining table that's not 
terrible. Nary a screw hole to be seen. Everything is nice and flat with no cracks or splinters. And that's how you build a farmhouse table that's not terrible.